Good morning. It's good to be with you on this Tuesday morning. Uh, as I've, if you know by now, I record these uh, a day early, so I'm recording this on Monday afternoon, and this is the uh, this is the uniform of most preachers the day after Easter. <laughs> this is our our Easter uniform. Uh, usually a T-shirt, or uh, I am at least wearing proper shoes uh, this morning, this afternoon rather. Uh, Wearing a baseball hat, though. So uh, this is this is the the day after Easter look for clergy. So today we're gonna um, finish out Joel chapter three. We're reading Joel three seventeen through twenty one. Uh, the end of this end of this book. So let's see what uh, how Joel wraps up. So you know that I, the Lord your God, dwell in Zion, my holy mountain. In Jerusalem shall be holy, and strangers shall never pass through it. In that day the mountain shall drip sweet wine, and the hill shall flow with milk, and the stream beds of Judah shall flow with water. A fountain shall come forth from the house of the Lord, the water of Wadid Shittim. Egypt shall become a desolation, Edom a desolate wilderness, because of the violence done to my people Judah, in whose land have shed they have shed innocent blood. But Judah shall be inhabited forever, in Jerusalem to all generations. I will avenge their blood, and I will not clear the guilty, for the Lord dwells in Zion. So we see the Lord, remember yesterday we talked about how Joel tells us that the Lord is aware and that he is not silent or absent or unaware of what the people are going through, that he hears it and that he will bring justice. He will bring vindication. The Lord will take care of his people. And it may not feel like it. We may not think it. We may be tempted to give up hope. But um, we are told in Joel, as we're told of many prophets, that the Lord sees and the Lord knows, and the Lord hears. So, last, so yesterday we looked at the judgment that comes to that comes to the people who have been oppressing God. But today we see a picture of what it looks like for God's people. You shall know that I'm the Lord, that I am the Lord your God, and I dwell in Zion, my holy mountain. Jerusalem shall be holy, and strangers shall never pass this way again. The mountain shall drip sweet wine. The hill shall flow with blood. The river shall flow with water. And a fountain shall come from the house of the Lord. I always, you know, I always think of that image when I hear about verse 18. A fountain shall come from the house of the Lord. It makes me think of Revelation, you know. Revelation has this image of the river flowing from the throne of God. You know, that's a beautiful image to me. I've always liked how this beautiful book ending of Scripture. Scripture begins in a garden. It ends in a garden. It begins with rivers hemming in the, the Garden of Eden. It ends with a river flowing from the throne of God. And we see here that this fountain shall come forth from the house of the Lord in water. You know, in that, in that day and age, water was a precious resource. They had, they built cisterns to catch the rainwater because rain was so hard to come by and water was so rare that you didn't want to waste any drop of water so to talk about an abundance you know the, there's abundance of water the streams shall the, the stream beds they shall flow with water the fountain shall come flowing from the house of the lord god's abundance now egypt shall become a desolation adam a desolate wilderness because of the violence done to jews that god will god will bring judgment on evil we don't have to worry about that. Evil will be judged. You know, we evil will be taken care of. That's that's uh, one of the things I've learned in life is I've learned what's above my pay grade. And uh, God will judge the evil. That's not mine to do. That's his to do. You know, he'll he'll take care of it. I don't I don't need to do his job for him. He's God. He, he, he can take care of it. He can take care of his business. I just want him to take care of it. So um, there's this, this word that he, Egypt shall become desolation, but Judah shall be inha inhabited forever in Jerusalem to all generations. I will avenge their blood. I will not clear the guilty for the Lord dwells in Zion. God will restore and make all things right. The Bible is in many ways a story of redemption, the story of rest, of rest, uh, uh, restoration. We see the Bible starting, as we said earlier, in the garden. And 
things are soon corrupt. We see humans fall. We see sin enter in. We see death. We see all these things. And we see that um, things are corrupted. And the rest of the Bible, the rest of the Bible is God's plan of redemption and restoration, that God will restore all things. And there will be a new heaven and a new earth, that God will bring restoration. And we don't have to worry. We don't have to worry. There's, there's going to come a day, y'all. It's going to come a day where there's no more cancer. Can you imagine? I was reading an article today about how many older Americans feel their savings are wearing out because of unexpected health problems. It's going to come a day we don't have to worry about that, y'all. It's going to come a day with no more sickness, no more illness, no more pain, no, no more, none of these things. And a, fly, a fountain shall flow from the house of the Lord. That's what's going to happen. And that's what we have to look forward to. The mountain shall drip sweet wine and the hill shall flow with milk. The streams shall flow with water. It's going to be great. God's going to restore. And so I think when we keep that in mind about what God's going to do, that fills us with hope towards what we can do because sometimes it feels as though there's too much for us to do or too much for us to accomplish. And we can rest. We can rest. We can rest knowing that it's in God's hand. God's hand. I, I, I was listening to a podcast the other day and Speaker was saying he was, he was it, he, he internalized when he was younger that it was up to him, you know, that that he had to do everything, and, and that he had to fix every problem and save everything, and had to restore everyone, and that he had to live a perfect life with a perfect faith, and there was so much that he had to do. And he said he just wore him out to where that he wasn't even sure he wanted to be part of the faith anymore because he was just always felt like there was all the stuff he had to do. He could never do it. He never felt good enough. He never accomplished enough. He just didn't, wasn't good enough or holy enough or faithful enough or any of this enough. He just was exhausted, exhausted from, from trying so hard. And that's why I think this image of water is beautiful. Because sometimes we're like that desert, aren't we? Some like we're like those stream beds of Judah that just are worn out. We're told today they're going to flow with water. They're going to flow with water. And God's going to restore. And God's going to bring life. And it's not, it's not for us to do it all. It's not for us to figure it all out. It's not for us to get it all right. But now, as we enter into this post-Easter reality, where life has won and goodness has overcome evil, You can live deeply rooted in his love and know that Jerusalem shall be inhabited for all generations. Judah shall be inhabited. God's people will have a place and God's people will have a life. So stay rooted in that. I think sometimes we get so rooted in stuff that isn't of God and not that it's always bad. We find our identity in places other than God. And just, just stay rooted today in, in, in his love for you and his mercy for you and, that, and for what he shall do. That God will take care of it. That God will restore. And that God will bring life. So today, we have much to be thankful for. We have God's provision, God's care, God's grace, God's mercy, God's love, God's acceptance, God's very spirit. We have much to thank God for. So the prophets always kind of end in a good note like that, don't they? Reminding us that God's going to take care of it. So that's Joel. We finished Joel today. And uh, tomorrow we're going to pick up with Amos. Amos is a neat story. I'm looking forward to uh, to, to, to get with you in Amos. Amos is, is a little bit longer than Joel. Amos is um, Amos is nine chapters. So we'll, we'll be in Amos for a little bit. And uh, ooh, ooh, Amos is, Amos is going to... Uh, <laughs> Remember the goodness of Joel today, because Amos is going to come in um, 
off the top rope with the Macho Man Randy Savage elbow. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, uh, he's gonna bring the fire. He's gonna bring the fire. So we'll we'll pick up with Amos tomorrow. Hope you have a great day, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow with Amos. See you. Bye.